syncing both cameras. Greetings, unsettled souls. Well, welcome to the correct views. Sam I B. DeGangie doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. You might know me from Blasting News, <coughs> The Conservative Post, and Teddy State. Let's talk about that for a moment. Um, how many of you listening? Um, there's now a camera over there, so if I'm staring over there, I haven't suddenly lost my mind. How many of you hearing this have heard about the purge, the, uh, the, where they uh, got rid of everyone about the, uh, the spam pages on Facebook? How many of you heard about that? Okay, that is a direct lie built specifically to hurt and limit the outreach of libertarians, conservatives, Christians, even independents. At this point, if you're not a raving socialist, you're not allowed to speak. And I worked for the, of course, the conservative Daily Post and Teddy Stick, and they shut the pages down. Let me tell you, I guarantee you they're not spam pages. I worked there as a full-time job for just two months shy of two years. I wrote there every day. Many, many people listening to this have read my articles, and whether you have agreed with them or have not, I'm sure you've noticed uh, there's never been a call for violence or to harm anybody or to bring any misery to anybody. It's just a, uh, a take on the news that questions the mainstream narrative and the, uh, the push towards socialism, which we're seeing in this country. For that, I have been limited on YouTube. They've taken my monetization away on YouTube. They have now shut down Teddy Stick and the Conservative Daily Post on Facebook. Now, the sites themselves can remain up, but uh, and I'm going to read an article I wrote about this in a minute. For those of you that love irony, I got a gig about writing about losing my gig. That was funny. But um, <clears throat> shout out to Wits News. They're awesome. I use an analogy where I talk about China. When they offered the world trade, when they offered the world to come in and do business with them, China made a certain number of promises. One of those promises were that the islands were going to remain open. That there wasn't going to be warfare where merchant ships are going back and forth. You know what I mean? The average person working on a boat and carrying a couch from China to your local Walmart doesn't really want to have to deal with live fire going over his head. Well, that might sound funny, but... That's what China did. They started commandeering what is basically a, a major throughway to which they agreed upon. Now, to follow my analogy with that, Facebook invited companies, including those which I worked for, to advertise on their pages. So, they, you see the thing, advertise here, pay here. When you do that, if you don't happen to agree with what Mr. Zuckerberg thinks, then you will find out that you can't have your site up, you can't have your page up on Facebook. <clears throat> and all of the money that you've given them to amass a company will be taken away from you. And for those of you that think that that's legal because it's a private company, let me give you two instances where it's not. The most obvious one is the phone company. The phone company is not allowed to shut your phone off because they don't like the conversation that you had on the phone. Your political views mean nothing. The phone company cannot swoop in like some evil Batman and take away your job. They can't do that. However, Facebook can do that. What's up, Jerry? What's up, Sean? Um, you've got another example, the, the public square. You are not allowed to commandeer the public square from someone. And in the digital world, which is exactly what it is called, places like Facebook are the public square. And it's getting to the point where <clears throat> if they can go after the people who you may or may not like today, then they can go after you or the people that you like tomorrow. And I think that that's why this is extremely important. And I wanted to read what I wrote about it rather than come on here and start ranting and raving. Um, when I get to the China part, of course, I just explained that. This is what I wrote. You can find it at Wits News. 
Facebook and Twitter shut down conservative sites to skew election. Just in time to inflict great pain upon conservatives, it would seem, Facebook, Twitter, and other social media groups shut down 559 pages and 251 accounts that broke the social media's rules against spam and coordinated inauthentic behavior. I actually wrote um, not enough. I wrote like 180. It was 251 accounts. Um, that's according to CNBC, so it's not exactly fake news. Uh, however, while the mainstream media has tried hard to make this look as if it was fake accounts which were hit, this was not the case in a great many instances. As InfoWars host Alex Jones said, around 800 pages were taken away, and they were not spam, and they were just popular. Facebook, for example, claimed that the pages were shut down <coughs> were using fake accounts to share links across groups on Facebook. They post clickbait posts on these pages to drive people to websites that are entirely separate from Facebook and seem legitimate, but they are actually ad farms. Now, that may have been true with a couple of the pages to which they wish to use as an example, but I just gave you the example from first-hand experience of having worked there for a considerable length of time that these were authentic sites, that these were legitimate sites. I know that two of them were, the two that I work for, and Right Wing News was as well, because I think some of our writers had done freelance work through them. So those three, I know, were not ad farms. I, I guarantee it. They had real writers writing about real things. I had been one of them. They added this activity goes against what people expect on Facebook, and it violates our policies against spam. They used this strange reasoning to justify shutting down the Free Thought Project. That's huge, by the way. If you know anything about media at all, that's huge. The Free Thought Project, Press the Truth, Anti-Media Group, Cop Block, that's actually a somewhat leftist one, to be fair. Filming Cops, Right Wing News, Noisy Room, guns, Gun Laws Don't Work, and Voluntarist Veterans. Yeah, that sounds like a real threat. Also attacked on Facebook was the conservative Daily Post, the primary home of this author. While it is impossible to speak for all of the sites targeted, the Post has never called for violence, broken any laws, and is known for sourcing quite a bit of information in any given work. <clears throat> While it is more frightening, as many conservatives and others see it, is the fact that Facebook has even admitted that this action was due to its timing ahead of the U.S. midterms elections. Let that sink in. Facebook has admitted, not conspiracy theory, don't admit, oh, Sam's making stuff up. No, according to their release, Facebook has admitted to shutting down the sites due to the timing ahead of the U.S. midterm elections. That's a quote. In 2018, America, some of the largest corporations in the world can now shut down those with views which differ from the CEOs of those corporations, I wrote. They can admit it openly, too, and nothing is done. As InfoWars has observed, these are not fraudulent pages, but pages which, quote, included tons of massive independent media sites with millions of followers run by Americans. Not ad farms in China. Did you hear that, Zuckerberg? Not ad farms in India. This is ridiculous. A few weeks out of the midterms, it is hard to imagine the outcry that would take place if the Huffington Post or another left-leaning page were shut down with the sole in stated intent of swaying an election. There is, of course, the point of view that says that Facebook and other platforms are private companies and are free to do as they wish. We touched upon this. I wrote, while this may be true for the local bakery, in reality, this argument falls apart on a few fronts in cyberspace. First of all, Many of these social media outlets invited the business world onto their platforms, promising freedom. As they grew, they became the new public square, I wrote, of the digital world. It is not legal to prevent a person from speaking in such an environment. Or, to use a real-world analogy, China invited the world to trade with them, and once the world agreed, they now find that China is attempting to take over the very trade routes which are needed for business to happen. Secondly, the phone company, as I said earlier, is a private company too. However, they are not permitted to halt someone's service because they don't like the conversation or the tone of the customer. 
Yes, there are laws against using the phone illegally, but it must be remembered that none of these stated outlets above who got cut from Facebook and others have any history of illegal activity. <clears throat> Many people are asking what can be done. In the immediate future, contacting the Senate committee hearing this issue about tech monopolies right now, that's a quote, has been suggested by many outlets as of this posting. You had to leave a message due to high call volume. I called, please call. This is something you can do. I mean, rather than just get on here and rant and rave, I want to let people know what they can do to eliminate this kind of thing. The number you want to call, 202-224-1700. 202-224-1700. Readers are encouraged also to contact the White House personally and speak about the topic. There's a link here at witsnews.com. If something is not done to stop this attack, the acid-throwing socialists will have America looking like Nazi Germany in no time at all, according to many pundits. And I do not mean putting people in gas chambers. I mean silencing people. Okay, I'm not pretending that the left or the right is going to go putting people in gas chambers. That's not what I mean. It'll be skewed, but you know exactly what I mean. I'm talking about the silencing of journalists and people that write things that maybe some people higher up may not agree with, but are perfectly within one's First Amendment right to do so. In the, long term, in the long term, I wrote, sites like Facebook Alternative MeWe and Twitter Alternative Gab are growing in popularity, and they have a platform that pledges to stand against the kinds of actions that led to today's unconstitutional purge. Opening, account, opening accounts at these places and helping them to grow is another vital step that can be taken. Perhaps if enough people do this, Facebook will be as obscure as MySpace and Twitter will look a lot like Netscape. The battle lines have been drawn. After erasing a large site such as InfoWars without lawmakers doing anything, it seems to be open season on all outlets now. Outlets now, excuse me. Many people have wondered where our lawmakers are as the very people who are reporting on them are seeing their livelihoods taken away. While the Democrats may not be, may be the easiest and most guilty target, the GOP does run D.C. right now by a slight majority. Many readers fear that they feel that they are not doing enough to stop the censorship as it wars onward. After all, if they can silence Donald Trump and Rand Paul supporters today, then they can silence Sanders and his crown tomorrow. Think about it. How many... How many? I have a lot of leftists that listen to this. Welcome aboard. I'm glad for listening. Glad you're here. You know that you know that Bernie Sanders completely got this treatment. You mean to think if they're going to do it to Donald Trump now that they're not going to do it to Sanders and his supporters coming up? Are you crazy? If true liberty is not restored very soon, some journalists have said that the internet will soon continue to get much smaller, and the truth will simply become whatever is allowed to be seen. Uh, that's pretty much all I've got to say on it. I've been trying to figure out how I wanted to address it. I didn't want to come on here yelling and screaming and freaking out, but I, I did want to point out what is happening. And of course, it, it, it's added on to a remarkable year for me already, but, um, it, it's bigger than that. I mean, there are a lot of people whose jobs and whose livelihoods have been affected by this. There were some people, I mean, at least I, I still have a part-time job that I'm doing while I fill in this hole. Just fine, I'll get by it. But there were people to whom this was their only job. And again, if the 20 people at our site, you know, Teddy Stick had a few, CDP had a lot more. How many people has this just completely and utterly obliterated everything for them? That needs to be thought about, friends, and I think um, the time to think about that is better uh, sooner than later, because it's not something I think is going to miraculously go away. And we're going to move on to other topics. It has been addressed, I think, rather well. Um, Florida armed bystander stops gunmen at crowded back-to-school event at a park, according to police. Sorry, lefties. No, the man didn't freak out and start killing children with his gun. He actually saved the day. An armed bystander shot a man who opened fire at a Florida park filled with over 100 people, including children, for a Saturday back-to-school cookout, officials said. The Titusville Police Department said in a news release, the man was involved in a fistfight with another person in the Isaac Campbell Park and left around 5.20 p.m., only to return with a gun moments later and start shooting. 
A bystander who was lawfully licensed to carry a firearm then shot the gunman. For guns that don't save innocent lives. We are extremely grateful that nobody else was injured in the incident, Deputy Chief Todd Hutchinson said in a statement. The suspect opened fire on a crowd of public in the public, and it could have been much worse. Now, let me ask you here, real quick. If you make an effort to take guns away, there's a real good chance that that law-abiding citizen might do it, but the criminal probably will not. So, in this instance, you would have had a, an absolute bloodbath there. Plain and, there's no other way to see it. Yeah, I mean, a miracle could have happened. I do believe in them. I don't mean it facetiously, but otherwise, that would have been it. A DJ whose family organized the event in the park, he was standing under a pavilion when he heard the shots ring out. You know, this whole area there has seen so much gun restriction, and it brings us to the problems that we have now, plain and simple. Last story of the day, because I've been talking for a minute. I don't want you to be bored. I tried to go online and the You Are an Idiot song on YouTube. Was YouTube down or something? I have no idea. So I quickly found that before I went live. And uh, for you purists, I'm sorry. That's today's You Are an Idiot music. Again, though, if you want to see me make an idiot of myself, do make sure that you um, you tune in. It's either going to be Thursday or most likely this weekend. Buddy Puff, the most popular of the characters, will be done this weekend. And it's me being a complete and total fool, and you'll love it. It's fun, it's silly, and it's Halloween. All right, guys, again, you're ready for Halloween. This story, I'll tell you, <laughs> this story will definitely do it. Um, a security guard abused corpse at Memphis Hospital, smoking gun. A security guard at the Tennessee Hospital was found having sex with a female corpse in the body storage room, according to cops who arrested the man in this heinous act. <clears throat> Carmen Wright, 23, was arraigned this morning. Let me go to screen share for those of you on YouTube. There's so many perks. You go on Facebook, I go on early. If you hit me up on YouTube, on the Media Speaks, you get the screen share. Go to my page, you get the HDF camera. So many perks. Cameron Wright, 23, was arraigned this morning on a felony abuse corpse charge in connection with the shocking incident Wednesday. This is a bit dated at St. Francis Hospital in Memphis. Wright, seen at Wright, is locked up in a Shelby County jail in lieu of $3,000 bond. Interesting wording there. According to police, the court records and court records, excuse me, Wright provided investigators with a type statement confessing to having a vaginal intercourse with the deceased female in the body storage room. Two witnesses, a security guard and a representative with the transplant organization, told police they discovered Wright having sex with the corpse of a 37-year-old woman who had died earlier that day of a heart attack. Now, the fact that she was on a donor's list and bodily secretions tend to go in a number of places and people can donate eyes and skin. This is a, yeah, a real piece of work here. Following the death of the woman, a kindergarten teacher, that's awful, hospital workers placed her corpse in a body storage room since she had agreed to be an organ donor. Police allege that Wright entered the room and abused the descendant's corpse. There's a, 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 a link to it. It's, uh, the Wright was immediately fired, I would hope so, and the hospital issued a statement declaring that treating those who serve with dignity and respect is a top priority. Treating those we serve. The behavior of this individual does not represent our hospital state, what our hospital stands for, and these actions are completely unacceptable. Well, I, it's nice to see that he didn't get a glowing endorsement, I guess. In this day and age, you know, well, he's naturally attracted that way, so you probably shouldn't condemn him. All right, guys, that's the show. Again, I know you probably expected the weird characters for Halloween, but some rather serious things have gone down, and I thought that they should be addressed, so I have done so. Thank you for listening. Good night. God bless.